Hi everybody, welcome to Bucks UK TV. It's episode 117 in a very rare Victory Monday, people. Uh, it's only the Panthers, but we will take it. It's only three points, but we will take it. Um, everyone's still got a job. Everyone's happy. Um, Mariana, the Mike Evans show, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. 100% the Mike Evans show. Although uh, we did have uh, a little bit of uh, of a run game this week, but um, Mike Evans show, I mean, 1,000-yard season again. What a what a professional! What you know? What a player for for the Bucks. I you can't really say much more than that. He's just been the the stalwart of our team for so long now, um, and and I just hope he he gets paid in the off season and and stays with us. Yeah, I'm I'm of the mind now. I don't care how much it is. And I don't care. We're already in salary cap hell. We might as well be in salary cap hell with players we love. <laughs> and on the field. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I was just, you know, the fact he made the catch, got he knew he'd made the catch and made the yards, got up, threw the ball to the ref and went back again. There was no, like, singing or dancing or hip wiggling, you know. Um, he just got on with it. Fantastic. <laughs> let's let's stick with the offence then, David. We scored enough points to win a game. How did that happen? Yeah, I mean, obviously, heavy reliance on Mike Evans. I mean, he got most of our yards, two fantastic catches. Um it was great to see Chris Godwin actually get over the line and get his first touchdown of the season. I mean, amazing how he hasn't got it. And it wasn't a pass either. He had to do it with his legs. Um, you know, 21 points, just about enough. Um, you know, it, we made hard work always against the 10 and one team or one and 10 team. Um, you know, let's not cover it up. It was a win, but it was three points against a pretty poor team. And I know... You know, we were struggling, but actually, offensively, we had most of the team out there. There wasn't many people missing offence. Defence, we were short. So, you know, offence, you still think we should have been racking up more points than we got. Well, let's stick with offence. Phil, it felt like, for the first half at least, we opened up the playbook a little bit. Yeah, we did. It was, uh, you know, one of some very nice, refreshing changes there, you know. Um, but I have to admit... I watched it and I thought, you know, you have to feel for a shot like that, don't you? I mean, it's it's up the gut, you know, they don't make any, that offensive line's making no holds for him to run through. And um, you just think, God, oh, it's only me just, only me who just who just thinks, you know, it's, it's just, just not. And the 20 of us that are on the forum. I mean, I know stats don't work this way. So he had one carry of 30 yards, zip de doo dah Take that off, and he's got 19 carries for 54 yards. You know, it's still less than three yards a carry. Yeah, I mean, from the first first play up the gut, didn't work. So let's try it again, shall we? And I thought, it's just because I honestly think he's he's not as bad as, as people. Um, Led to you know believe I think I think he he's okay he, he's a good and I have noticed that he's always a like a a safety safety feature for for Baker Mayfield you know he's always there just just to, there just to get Baker out of trouble you know yeah if he's not on the uh, the spring pass he does seem to have been improving I think one one on the on the pass blocking actually um, it felt like several times the pocket was really close onto Baker. I don't know if that's just because he looked like teeny tiny and can't throw over the line. But, um, you know, it felt like it was really closing on him, but it just he always got the pass away. Although, although dare I say it, Mariana, it didn't always go to the receiver. Well, unfortunately, he did uh, he did throw an interception. Uh, but he's, he's still been generally a lot more, you know, safe and steady playing at quarterback for us. And, and we've said from, from day one, he doesn't need to win the game for us. He just needs to to manage it well, and and he just needs to to not throw the game away. And and for the most part, he's still doing that. And and I love I've I've grown to love him. Um, I I was uh I was all up on the on the Trask hype train uh, preseason, but I've I've definitely grown to to love Mayfield. He he really does wear his heart on his sleeve. He he always puts in a hundred percent. You see that guy putting his body on the line for us. He'll he'll run it and and not be scared of tackles and yeah. What can I say? And and he just he gets the job done. And when you've got players like Mike Evans out there, sometimes the ball doesn't need to get to the receiver because Mike Evans knows how to 
how to get a pass interference call. Normally, he he, he had one go the wrong way, but... You know, how is he, someone he picking you up, it. running you backwards, and that, that's not going to be a flag? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, can, he can draw it. He can manage to, to get those uh, pass interference calls. So sometimes the ball doesn't need to actually get into his hands for us to get yardage out of it and and we have to remember that with players like um like Mike Evans out there. I just saw Phil's blood pressure rise as you mentioned that Mariano. Is he still smarting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, Baker Mayfield I I I rate him. I start of the season a bit like Mariano I thought, no oh dear, this is a bit of a disaster. But I think he's okay, but the overthrows oh dear. You know, he's just a he's just a too many, too many. But I will say something though. You know, I saw one, saw something in that game. I didn't think, I didn't think I'd ever see a, an offensive line worse than ours. No. <laughs> Dear me, no time for that man to operate. You know, no time for that man to operate. Well, let's switch to talk about the defense then. So I think you're saying that there was some good pressure, David. What about the defensive side of the ball? As, as expected, unfortunately, Antoine Winfield leading tackler, which you never want that in the secondary. No, but I mean, we were so desperate on linebacker to start with, weren't we? I mean, we already had um, White and Levante out. KJ Brick going out on, what, the fourth defensive play of the game. Um, we quite expected so... to see Christie running out there. Big shout out well, to you, exactly. Christie. Well yeah. done. Well done. <laughs> you got to run the flag. We thought at one point they were going to give you some pads and stick you out there at middle linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, our defence, it's amazing how hot and cold they go. You know, they'll hold, they'll tight, they'll look brilliant. And then next series, it just seems to be wide open and all over the place. Then they get tight again. It's just, it's yeah. difficult really to understand them and where they're going and how they can't seem to play a complete game. Um, but given all the circumstances and the, the lack of depth we had out there, um, I thought actually they did a pretty good job, albeit as we said, you know, their offensive line wasn't great. We got to them a lot, a lot of pressure, um, and we did a job. I think the thing that surprised me most of anything was the uh, the coverage in the secondary and how well we seem to pick their receivers up. And on the coverage, they seem to be showing that an awful lot, which was uh, something I think for us Bucks fans we haven't seen a great deal of in the last I don't know four or five years. So. Yeah, Got the job I'll, done. I'm not. I'm not a sort of super X and O specialist, but if different when they were showing those replays, it looked like we were in man coverage, and yeah. I think that's clearly what the Bucks are better at. And dare I say it, because there's a lower caliber of receiver running at us, we're probably more confident knowing that we're going to put our corners out on an island, or um, you know, only have one one deep in the middle, or something like that. I think that make that that really, as you say, freed up. Uh, thing. And I guess on a different day, with a younger Shaq Barrett and a, and a JTS that can move, uh, we might possibly be able to get, get some pressure. I mean, Mariana, the, the, the defence as a whole, obviously, your your good friend Devin White, not not able to suit up today or yesterday. Yeah, as, uh, as David alluded to, we were very short at linebacker, um, but... The, the guy stepped up again. You know, we've we've had the player like JJ Russell step up. Christian Ezian forced a fumble. So we're having a lot of these sort of younger, unknown people step up. I think Diaby again uh, coming through really nicely, he got another sack. So what I'm seeing is some of the the depth that we've got um on the defense and, and Diaby's really growing on me as well since he started coming in. Um, I, I really think we've got potentially a, a sort of really good future if he if he can continue. I think what it looked like, and I, I don't know, I've not seen like snap counts exactly, but it looks like he's almost taken a step over um, JTS now. It felt like he was getting more plays than JTS, which is something that um, I think probably a, a lot of the people that have been on this pod over the the sort of last couple of seasons would say, well, you know, it's time that someone more effective is jumping over him. So maybe that will push JTS to improve. Maybe not, maybe. But as I say, he's he's really um he's grown on me. And and then we we do have someone like Antoine Winfield who is just so dependable. He's always out there. He seems to be on every tackle. He just pops up and he's either 
making a sack or getting an interception or he turns up every game. Just love him. And and they're all his impactful plays. So it wasn't just an interception, it was an interception to seal the game. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he and there's so many times where it's been him and him alone covering deep or um having to bat down balls in the end zone, exactly as you say. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So um yeah, Russell second leading tackler, Diaby third third leading tackler, and, and JTS kind of barely getting on the stat sheet, although I guess we're four four combination tackles, one solo. But I guess someone else that didn't get on the stat sheet really is Shaq Barrett, only one assisted tackle uh, on a day when we we needed uh linebackers. It felt like, you know, he just couldn't stay healthy and, and couldn't perform as, as a unit. Mm. I guess I wonder, do you think, Phil, we, we might be looking next year, do you think it might be Diaby one side, JTS the other, or uh, do we need to go shopping? I think we need to go shopping. I think patience with JTS is running out now. He's uh, We've always we've always been saying, yeah, it's just give him a bit longer, give him a bit longer, but he's he's... Week in, week out, he's not failing to impress too much, you know. And I'm surprised nobody's managing Cansey. How, how well he's playing. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what, you know, what I mean, he's he's uh, a real store, you know, powerhouse. He I was ha- half of the half of the team's QB hits for Cansey, so uh... yeah, he's he's been a <laughs> tremendous tremendous player. But uh, the player I want to give a smack around there is Carlton Davis, though. Oh dear, oh dear. Silly oh, penalties. Dear. Silly penalties. One minute he's doing some fantastic play, the next thing he's for three in penalties, and he's it just drives me mm. absolutely so frustrating to watch Carlton Davis. Mm. But uh, I think you've also got to remember, you know, we sold our soul to win the Super Bowl, and we sold our soul the following season, and we knew coming into this season, yeah. you know, with all the cap hit we've got that we were going to be struggling. And really, I, I think we've got the backbone going forward. Um, I've, I've a really, you know, a really strong team, but it's. I think we've done well. I really do. You know, you certainly wouldn't trade it in. Put it that way. No, <laughs> no, no, no I've done, done very, very well. Yeah, I mean, even I saw Todd smile. And honestly, <laughs> <laughs> and he but, even used a timeout. I mean, wow. yeah, I mean, it maybe it's like a... babies. Maybe it's just trapped wind or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. He, I saw him smile. Honestly, honestly, I'm sure I was. Yeah, <laughs> but it's. Um, we, we, I think we've got the makings of a, of a good team. Good team, and um, yeah. We'll, well in our in our off season review, we'll do a, a who who to keep, who to bench. Uh, you know, buy sell, all of that sort of thing. Um, but that's probably enough of a wrap up. Um, on the Falcon, on oh, sorry, the Falcons game. A wrap up on the Panthers game before we start to talk about the Falcons game. Um, so yeah, Mariana, Phil, David, thank you, and uh, join us shortly in the week in a few days' time, where you can hear our preview about what I think is shaping up to be a very important game. So we'll see you then, and until then, go Bucks! Go Bucks! Go Bucks. Go Bucks.